Hello YouTube and welcome back to the Solver School YouTube channel. My name is Mike Lukic and I'm the founder and creator of Solver School. And I'm today I'm going to be continuing the Solver Shorts YouTube series here with episode three entitled Solver Accuracy. Now, this is actually gonna be a two-part shorts where I'm gonna continue in episode four in today's video, I'm going to be covering well, what solver accuracy actually is, how you actually enter that when you are building out your solver solutions, the various trade-offs that you have when choosing your solver accuracy, and what that number actually represents. And then in episode four, I'm gonna continue that up a little bit further by showing you the differences between various levels of solver accuracy and how you should actually think about it and how you can actually choose what your desired accuracy should be depending on what you're actually trying to do with your solver solutions. Now, if you're not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, please make sure that you hit the subscribe button below. That really helps out the channel and it also keeps you notified when any new solver short videos are aired and dropped. And if you haven't already, please make sure you check out my website at www.solver.school to check out the Solver Masterclass. I have over 30 hours of Solver-related content on there, specifically designed to teach you how to use solvers properly within your own study. Now, without any further ado, let's jump into today's video. So now I'm over in GTO Plus, and I'm gonna show you in GTO Plus first, and then in PO Solver second, where you would actually enter the desired solver accuracy that you want when setting up your solver solutions. So when you are setting up your GTO Plus solve and you are comfortable with your game tree, so you have your pot, your stack sizes, and all of your bet options, and I'm not gonna go into detail with all of this. I have a, an, a, a different ranges in here as well too. But when I'm comfortable with this and I actually want to solve this game tree, I can click Run Solver. And that's when it's gonna bring up this target DEV. And it gives me a few different options. I can choose 0.5%, 0.25%, 0.1%, or in this case here, I can actually also enter a percentage in, and I've entered in 1%. So what this is saying is, I am choosing an accuracy of 1% on this particular solves. And I'll get into the specifics of what this number actually means in a second, but uh, this is where you would actually enter the desired accuracy in GTO Plus. Hopping over into PO Solver, it's similar. So I go to this post flop tree building and calculations tab. So this is where I would enter my ranges, my board, my pot size, my stack size, and the various bet configurations. And then in the upper right-hand side of the screen, and I'll move my this circle up here just so we can see uh, this accuracy settings here. So I can solve to an accuracy that is desired. Uh, in this case here, I have listed this checkbox here of 1% of the pot, but I also have a few other options within PO solver, I can convert this to a big blinds per 100 format, which is the same thing here essentially, but it's not anchoring it to the size of the pot. I also can stop this after a certain period of time, which is useful when you are solving a lot of different calculations or if you are um, maybe running a script where you have uh, a lot of different game trees and you just wanna move on after a certain period of time and you know whatever that period of time is okay on accuracy, that's a useful option as well too. But what I'm gonna be focusing on for this video is really just the percent of the pot functionality. So this is where you would add uh, this desired accuracy level in PO Solver. So now that I just showed you where you actually enter this value of solver accuracy, what does that number actually mean and what does that actually represent? And to explain that, I 
thought I would bring up a specific example and demonstrate this actually visually outside of the solver because this is really the, the best way to visualize, in my opinion, what that accuracy number represents. So I'd like to just think of this example scenario where we have a 10 big blind pot with 100 big blind effective stacks. Uh, I picked a under the gun versus a big blind scenario and the numbers are, you're not gonna be readable here on this particular slide, but you can see this green represents the uh, equity of the in position player and the blue represents the equity of the out of position player. You can even just see from this graph that the in position player is gonna have a massive advantage on this particular scenario. And as a result, the in position expectation value is gonna be almost 70% of the pot, 6.97 big blinds. And the out of position player has just over three big blinds or just over 30% of the pot. Now, I chose to look at this with a 1% accuracy. So what does that actually represent? So many people think that this output, this output here in the center means that this is the equilibrium solution, but that's not necessarily true. Solvers, if they, we had powerful enough computers, we could eventually get to an exact Nash equilibria, but uh, today's computers, even though they're super powerful, they still can't calculate uh, these poker scenarios, uh, especially complex poker scenarios where we're looking at flops, turns, rivers, multiple bet sizes, a lot of different hands and ranges. They can't calculate that down to a super precise level of accuracy. So that's why we have this required level of accuracy that we're okay with. So when I say I'm calculating this down to 1% accuracy, what that means is I'm saying that I'm okay if this solution that I come up with, that either player can exploit the other player for up to 1% of the pot. So in this case here, we have a 10 big blind pot. We are comfortable with the fact that at this solution, the in position player, if the out of position player, if we held the out of position player's strategy constant, the in position player could exploit the out of position player for up to 1% of the pot, or in this case, an extra 0.1 big blinds. Likewise, if we held the in position player's strategy constant, the out of position player could then develop a strategy that could then exploit that in position player's strategy for 1% of the pot or 0.1 big blinds. So what that's implying is that our equilibrium or our equilibrium solution is somewhere in this box, right? So somewhere between this level and all the way here, but there could be many possible solutions that fit within this spectrum. But at the end of the day, what we're saying is that this strategy that we're selected can't be exploited for more than 1% of the pot on either side of the spectrum. Now, we can extrapolate this a little bit further and say, well, what if we decreased our accuracy? What if we wanted within 3% accuracy? Well, in that case, now all we're saying in that scenario is that we are okay with the in position or out of position player exploiting the other player for up to 3% of the pot or 0.3 big blinds. If we wanted to get even more accurate, we could get down to 0.1% accuracy or even more accurate than that if we so chose to. And that would reduce this max exploit to 0.01 big blinds on either side. So you can see visually here that an increased level of accuracy. So this 0.1, as we move down from 3% to 1% to 0.1%, it's just narrowing this window. So we're one, narrowing the window where theoretically the equilibrium solution would exist. But two, we're also narrowing the ability for another player to develop a counter exploit that could exploit our 
chosen strategy as it relates to this particular output. And then likewise, as you move to a lesser level of accuracy, so this 3% level of accuracy, you're increasing this potential window where equilibrium might lie, but you're also increasing the opportunity to be able to develop counter exploits that can take advantage of either player's strategy. Now, there's gonna be some trade-offs, right? So why would you choose a less accurate version as opposed to a more accurate version? Well, greater accuracy or these smaller windows of exploitability are going to require additional processing power. Uh, it's also, that's gonna mean it's gonna require additional time to actually re reach a solution. So oftentimes you might hear people refer to CPU power and RAM as your two factors as to how efficiently or how effectively a solver can run. Uh, RAM is a function of the size of the game tree, but RAM is not gonna have anything to do with how accurate we can get to a final result. So really at the end of the day, it's gonna come down to your CPU. And if you have a really, really fast and good CPU and a really good computer, you can choose more accurate solutions. Also, if you have more time to let the solvers run for a longer period of time, you can get more accuracy in your solutions as well. But you know, sometimes we may not wanna make those trade-offs and we're okay with lesser levels of accuracy. So I hope that all makes sense. In the next video, I'm going to dive into this a little bit further and try to answer the question, how accurate do we need to be when we are solving our solver solutions? That does it for today's solver short video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. As I mentioned in the video earlier, today's content is actually broken up into two separate videos. So there's gonna be an episode four where I dive a little bit deeper into solver accuracy and talk about all the considerations that you might make when choosing how accurate your solves actually need to be. So make sure you subscribe to the channel to be notified when that new episode drops. And again, as I mentioned, if you're interested in diving into solver content, please make sure you check out the Solver Masterclass at www.solver.school. Thanks a lot and have a nice day.